the Big Bang Theory has been around for the 60s and, well, not the Big Bang Theory, scientific theory has been around since the 60s. The TV show is like seven years old now. Um, these things actually do happen. And here's an image of um, one example in our Milky Way. This was actually image done by a colleague of mine, Mallory Roberts, whose office is right on the other side of this whiteboard. That little dot in the center, that's the neutron star the size of Abu Dhabi Island. This big ring around it is the hot gas produced in the supernova explosion. That's the supernova remnant. You might notice that around this neutron star is this sort of fuzzy blue stuff. And that fuzzy blue stuff is called a pulsar wind nebula. And where it comes from is you have this neutron star, size of Abu Dhabi Island. Whatever caused it to collapse, one, caused it to spin really rapidly, about 100 to maybe 10 times a second, you know, Abu Dhabi Island spinning really, really quickly, and gave it a really strong magnetic field. So trillions, billions to trillions times stronger than anything we can make on the Earth. Now, if you take a magnet, spin it really quickly, it turns into a battery. And batteries create currents. That's how all, all electronic devices work. And these currents, these really high energy charged particles, because that's what a current is, expands into the surrounding supernova remnant. That's what a pulsar wind nebula is. You have this tiny little object the size of a neutron star. It makes a wind. We call it a pulsar because it's emission pulses. It makes a wind of high energy particles because it's spinning. And nebula is Greek for fuzzy. So it's a fuzzy object created by a pulsar wind. And that's a pulsar wind nebula. And what I study are pulsar wind nebula inside these supernova remnants. Now, these neutron stars, I've talked about pulsars. So one spinning really rapidly produces. There are other types of young neutron stars. And there's this peculiar class of neutron stars which have even stronger magnetic fields called magnetars. And the question is, well, how do they come about? And there's recent evidence that suggests that normal pulsars can turn into magnetars and then they evolve into something else. And that's physics we just don't understand. Why would the magnetic field strength of this neutron star get stronger with time and then suddenly drop off? You know, the physics of these neutron stars, objects the size of Abu Dhabi, but one and a half times the material of the sun, they have densities higher than atomic nuclei. We don't understand how matter works at those densities. We don't understand how matter works at those pressures, let alone how it works under these really, really strong magnetic fields. And with new telescopes, we'll have more examples of these instead of like five to 10, we might have samples of 30, 40, 50, and then statistically try to disentangle the different, um, the different populations from each other.